Fondation Jean Jaurès. Pensez pour agir. The Czech uh, presidency of the council has come to an end in very turbulent times. The continued war in Ukraine, the volatile situation in the South China Sea, the disruption of the energy sector and inflation are only some of the challenges, the new ones faced by the European Union uh, in the past few months. Now, this turbulent context with its uncertainties, with its cracks, has not been a godsend for the Western Balkans. The situation on the ground has not improved very much on the contrary. It's still very hard to say if um, the EU accession perspectives um, the EU offers are now more credible compared to six months ago. But we will discuss these latest de developments and the positions, the advancement of the EU in the region um, and see what the EU has achieved in the past couple of months under the Czech presidency. I received today uh, Jana Yuzova. Jana, you are a senior researcher and head of the Global Europe Program at the European Institute of uh, European Policy in Prague. I am Florent Marciac, director of the Observatoire des Balkans at uh, Fondation Jean Jaurès. Yana, thanks, thanks again for join, joining. Welcome. Thank you for having me, Florent. Let's start with the Czech uh, presidency of the Council that just ended. What is your assessment um, of, um, well, of the presidency when it comes to EU Western Balkan uh, relations? What has been achieved according to you and what could not uh, be achieved? Uh, so uh, I would say that uh, if I was to be brief, I would say it was definitely positive and uh, it uh, resulted from several re reasons because uh, first of all, of course, the whole situation and thinking inside the European Union actually changed uh, fundamentally uh, during past year because of the Russian war in Ukraine and uh, the way the European leaders uh, were reassessing uh, the EU's approach towards uh, its neighborhoods and uh, the realization of the need for a much, much stronger engagement, I would say. And uh, the Czechs, uh, I would say, came uh, uh, at the right moment because for the Czech Republic, the Western Balkans and EU enlargement policy in general is among the traditional priorities of its European and foreign policy. And it was expected, there were high expectations uh, that the Czechs will be engaged in the region and they will try to move the enlargement agenda forward. Uh, so um, they managed to do it, uh, actually. And uh, we had some very concrete results. After many years of stagnation enlargement process, we had uh, very, very good steps. First of all, in July, um, that was an inheritance from the previous French presidency mostly, but uh, we had the first intergovernmental conference uh, officially starting the negotiations um, between uh, the European Union and Albania and uh, conditionally North Macedonia, which still is faced with uh, the obligation to implement a difficult constitutional reform. Uh, but nevertheless, this was a success. And uh, after it actually continued uh, with the candidate status granting uh, to Bosnia and Herzegovina and the agreement for visa liberalization for Kosovo, which was uh, also very long overdue. So um, in all these respects, when we look at the concrete results, uh, it was a successful presidency. And uh, on the maybe less visible level, uh, there also were some important uh, steps or uh, progress achieved in terms of uh, actual integration of the candidate countries or potential candidates for EU membership uh, with the European Union. So uh, the Czechs actually uh, started initiating uh, joint meetings at the ministerial level during informal uh, meetings of EU ministers, for example, for energy or migration and uh, for, for foreign ministers and um, invited the Western Balkan ministers to join these meetings to actually participate in the discussions. So uh, we've seen some very positive developments. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. So you mentioned the changing geographies of enlargement, the context which are, which are clearly shifted, um, the geopolitics in it. Um, do you think, because indeed there are these steps and the uh, actual the actual integration, the participation of the Western Balkan countries in, in more processes you mentioned too, um, do you think that the, the the approach, the accession policy, is also changing very to the core because of um, because of the new geopolitical context, or are we still making steps? And indeed there is movements, but within the same um, the same process we had as before. 
Yes, that's absolutely a challenge because uh, we've seen uh, the emergence of also new platforms for communication or dialogue with countries uh, in the European Union's neighborhood, like the European political community and so on. So uh, while these important uh, steps or achievements are significant, uh, there is still the question whether the actual uh, will of uh, European Union member states uh, to enlarge, to really accept new members into the club uh, is actually there. So uh, this will be quite a challenge uh, for the upcoming presidencies, I would say, because now we have a new momentum, but uh, we still need to see the concrete results in terms of actual enlargement. So um, we will see because also the upcoming presidencies, the countries which will hold them and now, uh, Sweden and Spain, Belgium, these are not countries which would traditionally be very active or very supportive in the enlargement agenda. So uh, we will see. Hopefully, we won't lose the momentum. Mm -hmm. So this is the side which is uh, also the ball is also on the, the member states uh, side to to see how to keep this momentum going and and design a, a strategic goal. Um, you mentioned the, the European political community. Uh, it has been launched in Prague uh, in October. The first meeting was there. Um, the idea uh, has been launched by, by Emmanuel Macron uh, and Enrico Letta uh, so earlier last year with the idea of uh, structuring politically the continent. Um, the European political community includes all uh, six um, countries of the Western Balkans, but there are fears. Uh, there are fears uh, in the region, uh, regardless of, 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 of the limited administrative resources and, and, and capacities which can be devoted to, 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 to participating in that. The fears is more they are, if, if the fear of, of having one more waiting room and that's mm. the uh, and, and European political community is just uh, one more space to put the countries um, still outside of uh, the EU. Others um, underline the, uh, the value added of this uh, new format uh, and the potential of it. What is your take on it? Uh, that's a great question, because uh, the first summit uh, of the European political community, which was held in Prague, uh, well, first of all, there uh, was before that quite an extensive communication from uh, the Czech government towards Western Balkan partners, but also to associated trio countries, which uh, submitted their applications for EU membership, that this is in no way supposed to replace the enlargement process. Um, of course, I believe that uh, the Czechs were honest about it and about their intentions, uh, and it certainly should not serve as that. Uh, but the, the summit itself was very vague. Um, it was uh, also the purpose, actually, uh, according to the Czech government, to have it as a, a very open forum for discussion, uh, for bilateral meetings also among the leaders. And uh, with no predefined outcome, there was no declaration or anything like that. So um, the initial meeting took place. And now the question is, what will happen with the European political community, whether it will lead to some concrete results uh, in terms of pragmatic cooperation in the area of energy, for example, or green transition or defense and so on. So uh, we will see with the upcoming summits, there are supposed to be two of them this year. And uh, for the Western Balkans and candidate countries in general, I believe it can be useful to some extent. Uh, they should uh, make it clear also from their side that uh, they won't accept the European political community to replace the enlargement prospects or accession prospects for them. Uh, and uh, they should not maybe devote too much energy as in limited, they have limited resources, so they shouldn't, um, these limited resources devote or direct too much towards this, this platform very vague and loose, uh, but uh, be focused more on uh, meeting the conditions for actual accession. Uh, but in the same time, it's definitely positive to look at it um, as a, a platform for discussion, for dialogue, for more meetings. So I believe for candidate countries, it has an important socializing effect because they are meeting with the European leaders uh, in an informal setting. Uh, they can bring up any issues, bilateral issues that they uh, might have with some of the EU members, um, some address some concerns that some of the EU countries actually have about their prospects uh, of membership in the European Union and so on. So uh, if it's viewed uh, from this point, then I believe it can be positive. Thank you. You, you mentioned last question, you mentioned um, the developments on the first so one on the grounds in the in the region in the Western Balkans uh, with Bosnia, the, the, the kind of status, 
uh, the, the starting negotiations or conditional ones with North Macedonia, Albania. Um, in Kosovo, also some movements, um, which brings me to Serbia. Um, we, we have in Serbia a situation where some pro-Russian sentiments are getting entrenched uh, in the population and we have an elite uh, playing very much on, 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 on these. Um, what would be uh, your, 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 your take on that? How can the EU have a, a more decisive or a more impactful uh, impact uh, in Serbia um, so that suits its uh, strategic interests? Mm. Um, well, of course, the question of Serbia is very, very difficult one, and I would say urgent one in the past few months uh, for the European Union. And uh, what we are seeing is that the increased pressure on Serbia to take a side, basically, in this uh, very difficult geopolitical situation uh, are not delivering the expected results necessarily. Um, the, the speeches of the Serbian president Vucic uh, in recent weeks are very worrying. For the first time, we are hearing that uh, for Serbia, uh, the European integration might not be strategic priority anymore, which is something which uh, has not been questioned uh, since 2000s. So um, it's very difficult and very concerning situation. But uh, I think uh, because towards Serbia, the EU uh, cannot do much uh, because applying more pressure only res results in um, being it interpreted as uh, uh, basically uh, blackmailing uh, of Serbia's pe Serbian people and uh, bringing in the issue of Kosovo and so on. So uh, I think in the end, the, the most viable solution would be to move forward with the enlargement process towards the region in general. And when uh, other countries are making progress and the EU shows that it's able to deliver on this progress and on these efforts, then uh, hopefully uh, Serbian citizens will start asking questions why we are not progressing, why we are not having these economic benefits which uh, stem from closer integration. So uh, hopefully this, this could actually help and somehow change the thinking in Serbia. Thank you, Jana. Thank you for sharing these thoughts. Uh, thank you. Goodbye. Thank you for inviting me. Bye. Fondation Jean Jaurès. Pensez pour agir.